Good evening, ladies and check one, two. Ladies and Sturmendrongs, Reichley here on a Thursday evening. Uh, the purpose of this video is to show this new Yamaha S90 keyboard that I have. Uh, it's not new, not nearly new probably 17 years old as it came out in the 90s maybe uh, anyway I'm rambling already uh, Yamaha S90 is a workhorse of the industry it's the number one chosen check uh, it's the number one chosen digital piano for the gig uh, I didn't have one I have lots of other gear uh, that I've messed with in my studio upstairs including a Casio Privia 350 that I bought uh, instead that was only $800 that I actually prefer the feel of the keys better on it uh, but I used it on one gig and realized that it's uh, too flimsy uh, to carry around it's not a gig instrument and so this video is a multi-fold purpose which one is um, to play this instrument because I've only had it for several weeks and my process and programming to find some sounds that are good enough that I can gig with. And on top of that, I have a new PA system that I'm playing through, uh, and I would like to show that too. And on top of that, instead of using my normal Nikon Coolpix camera on a tripod to record these videos, uh, Kyle Whitlock likes to torment me about my audio quality out here in the garage. And so instead, I've brought my oldest laptop out here and a new webcam that I use upstairs. A webcam on the computer, uh, which is better quality video. And also, I'm using QuickTime to record this. And I'm using my dedicated M-Audio Transit audio card, which is an old $100 USB audio interface that I've used with this Mac MacBook for a long time. But this old computer has lasted me... Uh, I think it was made in 2005. Uh, it's been a good computer. And so I wanted to use the webcam and the webcam and QuickTime will pick up whatever your audio interface improving the, the quality of your video. So instead of using the built-in mics in the computer, this will pick up whatever audio interface you have. So this was an experiment to use this old computer to plug in the new webcam. It recognized it immediately. I can choose to use it. I'm not using the built-in iSight camera. And it also is picking up this audio interface that has a stereo miniature condenser mic that I use with all my mini disc recordings. It uh, requires voltage from the bus of the mini disc player to power it. But it seems that it works just fine with this particular audio interface. And so I hooked this up. And sure enough, I'm getting sound. So the bottom line here was I have this um, Yamaha S90 that I just picked up. It showed up at Jim's Pawn Shop. When they first came out, this is a $2,000 instrument. I didn't quite have the scratch to go over there and buy it. They wanted, uh, I think their price was $699 that they had on this keyboard. And I didn't have that dough. Uh, I bought some other things recently. And also... I finally did go in and play it and they let me set it up on the countertop and I plugged in headphones and the action was really nice 88 weighted keys very nice controller all the buttons work man pristine shape but I didn't immediately access sounds that I could use on the gig and I knew this about the original S90 uh, later they upgraded it it became the S90 ES the S90 EX they just added more memory ROM chips to it to give you more sample memory and better sound. So I was not quite sure if and when I would be able to use this off the shelf, which is why I let it sit there. I went in and I didn't find a sound that, oh, I can't take that to a gig immediately and use it. So it seems superfluous. I have other gear, but after thinking about it for a month or so and going back in and looking at the quality and what good shape it was in and thinking that's a $2,000 instrument. Maybe they'll take less. So I offered them $600 and the guy accepted it. Uh, I didn't have the $600. Uh, so I gave him $150 to hold it, which they don't normally do. 
and then within two days I got the money together and I went back and I paid it off so anyway this is this Yamaha s90 it's a brand new digital piano uh, to me uh, uh, and um, probably is one of the best keyboards I've ever owned and I'm out here pecking through it trying to program a basic complement of sounds that I can take uh, and use at the gig because I got a gig coming up and I want a new gig rig and this is what it's gonna be so many years of waiting finally I've got an s90 I got a new PA system here that's running in eight ohms with two cabinets on either side of the amp gives me much more wattage uh, power clean I'm gonna turn my reverb up just a little bit on the piano sound and anyway here's the piano that I came up with trying to gauge the input level of this mic it's not to overdrive the audio Kyle Whitlock because uh, I don't normally record this way with a laptop and a webcam and a mic I normally do it upstairs with my Mac Pro but I'm back out in the garage because this is where my live rig is this is where I'm going to do the work this is where the equipment is going to stay if I start to play live again so anyway Needless to say, this audio input is not feeding directly into the video like it is upstairs. I'm picking this up with this mic, right? Um, So this is a very clean piano sound. It was the jazz piano sample. The S90, as it turns out, has lots of banks. It has a great capability of four different MIDI channels, MIDI zones. You can split the keyboard into four different sections. You can program presets, multis. It'll play sequences. I've got in the programs that are on board, preset one, preset two, preset three, GM, general MIDI, and user. Each one of those has A through H banks, and A has 1 through 16, B has 1 through 16, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. That's 8 times 16 presets for just one button, and I have 1, 2, 3, and I have 5. So that is a shitload of sounds in this keyboard, and it's just the last couple of nights that I went through and, and in programming a basic complement of sounds that I can use to play a gig. That's my piano sound. Uh, it's not spectacularly Kurzweil with lots of harmonics in it. It's basically clean, and the EQ is such that it's not like a grand piano, the way the presets come from the factory, which is they're unbalanced and unwieldy and meant to impress you immediately on the fly. They have to be pared down and EQ'd to work so that as I sit here and listen and play as a pianist, it's gonna sound and feel like a piano to me. That's the number one thing. So I try to scale the keyboard from bottom to top and make all the notes, all the C's, relatively the same volume. And uh, I'm running through two Mackie C200 PA speakers and two PV cabinets on the bottom with a 12 inch Celestian guitar speaker. So the PV Deca amp is a 700 watts, but you got to run it in four ohms, which means you got to run two speakers on a side, two speakers in a channel to get it down to four ohms, which gives you the power and the clarity. If you run it with only two speakers, one on a side, you're only getting eight ohms and it's not very loud and very clean. And I ran it with those Mackies and it wasn't great like that. It was okay. But man, with the PV speakers on the bottom, I'll stop for just a second and give you a little bit of, a, of, of seeing what that is. So there's the Mackie C200. It's only a 10 inch speaker and a dome tweeter, but on the bottom is an old PV cabinet built like a horse. Uh, and I put a, a 12 inch Celestian speaker in that. 
So that those two speakers together, a 12, a 10, and a dome tweeter are acting as my PA cabinet, and I have two. And the amp is in stereo, so I am in stereo left and right. I'm running four ohms, and I'm using this rack, basically, which is a PV Deca 700 amp. Uh, I've got five of these Mackie uh, PA mixers now, and I figured uh, after all these years that the quarter inch jacks are not just quarter inch jacks, that they're tip ring sleeve stereo jacks that you can use in low impedance. So when you run this PV Deca amp, using it in well, via low impedance is the, the best choice because it cuts noise and uh, heightens your, your signal ratio. So you have to use a specialty cable, which is a tip ring sleeve quarter inch jack. It's stereo. And that's three conductor cable and it goes to an XLR on the other end, which goes into that PV Deca amp. So I'm running low impedance. All of these jacks on this PV mixer of amazing things, they're low impedance. If you use a stereo plug, then it's running low impedance and a much cleaner signal. So all these years later, I figured out finally how to get the best out of this PV Deca amp and these Mackie mixers. And by running eight ohms with two speakers, uh, and here's a little quick view of the Yamaha S90, right? So that's the gear that I'm using. Um, not on top of this uh, old MacBook computer that's over 10 years old. And uh, this audio card and this mic. And then I can't show you the webcam because I'm holding it. But anyway, so that's that's my gear set up. Uh, so quick, quickly enough, that's cool. Uh, here's my roads. that I found within the presets and the big programming is EQ. How to EQ the acoustic piano and the keyboard down so that it fits into the band spectrum which I'm using the four band EQ on the S90 which conveniently is located right here along with pan, reverb, chorus, cutoff, resonance, attack, release. The basic things I need to very quickly tweak a sample and store it into a user preset to be able to use it on a gig. So I now I've got a Rhodes. I'm not saying these are wonderfully my best greatest sounds, but they're good enough to use in this really fine keyboard. Um, my stand is the right height because meticulously over the years I've studied and learned the height that I like for my keyboard to be which is a lot shorter than what people normally play. I cut the legs off. It's not a very expensive stand. It came from Amazon.com. My bench came from Guitar Center. Uh, it's not super expensive but the height of that is very much set so that when I sit down to play all of this ergonomic thing for me is the correct way. So the keys, the action on this S90 are not to me as good as the Privia 350, the, the piano action, the hammer action. You don't hear the hammer, feel the hammer throw. This is very much like a KX88 and also the S80, which took some getting used to. The throw of the key is a little short. Yeah, it's definitely a little, sh not quite long enough, the, the key. 
内側と。So when it thumps means the hammer throws, it means that you can lock into time. And it's fast, and so overall,、uh, I really like it. And for six hundred bucks. Piano.、Uh, lot, not a lot of overtones, but I think that it's clean, that it's pure, it's musical,、uh, and that's what I need. Turn the onboard effects off. Uh, there's reverb and chorus. Don't use it, and I'm using my MIDI verb instead, right? Good thing is, is 700 watts of power. It's clean and it's in stereo. To overload the mic, Kyle. But trying to give enough signal to the video so that you can hear what I'm saying, you can hear the music.、Uh, here's Wurlitzer. Overdrive. Just a little bit of sine wave distortion. I think that's coming through the tremolo effect in the Yamaha, but it's all right. Restoring Rhodes piano, and so oddly enough, I'm going to divert the subject matter of this video very quickly to this project, which is, ladies and germs, restoration number three. So, give the camera a chance to focus. This is a 1971 Mark I Rhodes 73 stage piano that belonged to my friend Jay Knowles, Bubba Knowles in Columbia. It's project number three. The guys that have watched my videos here, I restored the Mark II 73, and I've restored a Mark II 54. Well, the guy said all you need is to do a Mark I. Well, here it is. <laughs> So,、uh, I'm. You can see I'm not quite halfway through. It has a new electronics um, uh, unit. This is I bought this from Vintage Vibe. So this electronics is brand new. It's been replaced, right? So new volume pot, new tone pot, new capacitor.、Uh, I always get rid of the RCA jack, so it's hardwired.、Um, it has new hammer tips. That's the first thing I do. Put new hammer tips on it, and I'm systematically in the process of restoring the tines and the tone bars. So you put new grommets and new screws,、um, put that on, tune it, and then voice it、um, roughly as you can. So I've got this much many more keys to go. So this Rhodes is taking up space out here. I had to set up my 
Yamaha uh, over here in the front um, and I haven't done a super amount of work on this Rhodes because I haven't been inclined uh, to do it recently but anyway that is in the works uh, so and I'm gonna cover that back up because I don't like dust uh, getting in my work there so this will be Rhodes project number three and the funniest thing actually if uh, we could just loosen up enough to be able to have fun which I'm not if you can see over there against the wall that thing underneath the serrated tool the white uh, towel next to the shelf is another Rhodes Another 73 uh, that the case is rotted out, but I got this from Mike Wallace, a uh, saxophone player with the 82nd Airborne Band uh, and jazz singer, very nice guy, musician. Uh, the Rhodes works fine. All the pickups work, all the notes play. All it needs really is probably, I bought a hammer tip kit for it because they're not that expensive. Uh, and then to tune it and just to tweak the voicing a little bit, but the cabinet, funny thing is, the wood cabinet rotted out. So all is left is the chassis. It needs a new case. But the cool thing is, is that the piano is playable, unlike these, the 54 and the 73 Mark II and the Mark I. This one is going to need uh, key bushings because insects or whatever ate the felt uh, in between the, the keys where the pin is. So I'm going to have to... You need a call, a C-A-U-L, to put the appropriate Steinway felt in the slots and the keys. Anyway, this is going to be nice. I, I've done the first couple of octaves here on this Mark I, 1971, and it sounded good. And it'll be interesting to hear the difference between the Mark I, 1971, and the Mark II, 1981, right? As I think that they're, uh, these are pink wound pickups. Uh, they've all continued to work all these years so that's a really good thing the white pickups on the mark twos they tend to fail and i had to replace a lot of those but i have a good supply over here back in my treasure trove of rewound pickups uh so even though i haven't been doing a lot with the roads recently uh still got the capability so anyway there's my Wurlitzer. <laughs> Wurlitzer tremolo uh, and then here um, is a d6 clavinet I'm finding that there's a fairly good set of samples in this baseline beginning Yamaha S90, not an ES or an SX or the later models, but the very basic S90 that they produced, uh, still too grand. Uh, and here is one piano, an acoustic that I found that I didn't quick tweak the EQ to show as a comparison. This would be a piano sound as it comes from the factory. Really muffled on the low end. Here's mine. And obviously it's hollowed, thinned out more like a studio piano because you don't need those bottom notes. When you play in a gig, there's plenty. Not a lot of overtones, but very clean.
anyway uh there it is yamaha s90 newly acquired new pa system 700 watts four ohms stereo gig rig moving in the right direction peace out thanks for listening